Hi, I'm Adrian Dunbar, and this is the GQ action replay of Line of Duty. Let's have a look. Given the gravity of the charge against you, I know we'd both hate to be accused of special treatment. Best we treat you like any normal, regular person who's been accused of plotting to kill someone. Don't you agree? Absolutely uh, a fabulous piece of casting, Anna Maxwell Martin to play Patricia Carmichael. A lot of people thought immediately, well, she's obviously in on the OCG, she's coming from that territory, from uh, directly within the kind of force itself. But in, in effect, that's who she is. Brilliantly played, obviously, and really, really uh, wonderful to work with, and a very, very funny person, indeed. In your mind, having just learnt that Corbett had tortured your wife, uh, no other motivations were at work? None. And that he was involved in the death of one of your officers, PC, Manit Bindram? Yes. You weren't vengeful towards Corbett? My first concern remained, as it should do for all police officers, the preservation of life. I mean, Ted really is under pressure here, isn't he? I mean, the whole series, this whole series was leading to this particular moment whereby we all thought, you know, we're going to find out who H is and possibly, you know, Ted is H. One of the interesting things here, of course, is that I'm on the other side of the table. When you're in Anna's position and you've got, you know, you're the interrogator. It's completely different to when you're responding and reacting. And uh, of course, you don't know that until you're over there on the other side of the table. So it was a very interesting thing for me to find myself as the accused and not the person who was pursuant of the accused. I didn't think Ted was going to be hitched. I think the whole country would have been very upset if that was the case. Corbett was Anne-Marie's It is difficult to drum drum up emotion. I mean, you, you have to contact places that, and think about things. The Northern Irish context of this particular piece, of course, I think is very significant. You know, if you find out that you've been instrumental in somehow, even tangentially in the death of someone, of course, it is going to affect you. One of the reasons we like um, I think that the public like Hastings is because he does show his emotions. He's a bit old school. He just doesn't take things on the chin and move on. He had to get up. He had to go out. He had to do the next bit. I have not been bribed. The 50 grand found your hotel room uh, came from the same pot as that used to bribe Vihan Malhotra and P.S. Jane Cavity. And according to evidence obtained by your own unit, those individuals were in the pay of the same organised crime group in which John Corbett was embedded. I do not have a connection with Malhotra or Cafferty. This bribe proves you do. No. I mean, when you do interrogation scenes like this, they can. They take about a day to rehearse and a day to shoot. You know, you're doing two passes on me, two pe passes on Anna Maxwell with uh, three cameras. You can, because the police refer to notes, you can, as an actor, refer to notes. However, that's no good to me. I've got to learn everything because, as you can see right now, I wear glasses. But as the character, I don't. They'd killed Manit, they'd, they'd, they'd murdered Lester Hargreaves, they'd, they'd held up the Eastfield Depot. Time was running out. You pretend to be H successfully enough for the OCG to share with you the proceeds of the Eastfield robbery. No, I was using them to find out where the proceeds were hidden. Who better to impersonate H than H himself? All Institute forces, uh, especially the Army and so forth, use an ac acronym so that they can things can happen a lot, a lot faster. Martin Comston, sadly, was the person who I had to learn the most acronyms all the time. In fact, I think he had seven acronyms in one sentence at one point, which is a bit of a world record. Thankfully, I didn't have to learn too many of them, <laughs> but they, they are difficult. You ordered DSR not to disclose those details? You're damn right I did. I was his commanding officer. For Christ's sake, what the hell's going on here? Well, the interesting thing is that these are idioms. And these are things that sometimes don't make any sense unless you know where they're coming from or what their context is. So to drum them back up and bring them into public parlance is quite an achievement, actually. And myself and Jed, we both decided that early on that if Ted was a bit old school, he may kind of go off piece a bit and use some phrases and just some things that he does himself. I mean, my, my father used to say a mother of God all the time. And because he was a Catholic, of course, we started saying 
things like Mother of God and Jesus, Mary and Joseph and stuff like that. They've, they've, they've really caught on because I think they give the character a lot of color. People started doing things like inventing games, you know, things like saying fella, you know, inventing drinking games around it and so forth. And uh, so it became quite, it became quite a thing. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and good fun. Well, thanks for watching everybody. Thank you.